on today's show, we look back at the private resale market in 2015. Next on XTV with your host, Amanda Tan. Hello, I'm Amanda Tan. 2015 was a slow year for the private real estate market. On top of that, it ended in a rather uncertain way. Unfortunately, going into 2016, there are more questions than answers. Question 1. How did the private market perform in 2015? Activity in the private resale non landed market has been in decline since 2010. However, in 2015, volume rose by 22.4% compared with 2014. In terms of price, 2015 year-end December, SRX price index finished at 164.8, down 2.3% for the year. As you can see from the non-landed private median resale transaction over X value graph, in short TOX, the TOX has been hovering around zero for two-thirds of the year, suggesting that prices have stabilized and adjusted to the existing market conditions. But then, in December, it suddenly dipped in to negative $5,000. On the landed front, we see a similar trend. In terms of volume, activity in the resale landed market has also been in steady decline since 2010. However, in 2015, it too posted a positive year-on-year -year increase. In this case, volume increased by 14.1% compared with 2014. In terms of price, 2015 quarter 3 index finished at 197.3, down 2% for the year. Question 2. What were the top private resales in 2015? The most expensive non leaded private resale transaction in 2015 occurred at Nassim Park Residence in District 10. It transacted for $22,500,000, which translates to $3,271 PSF. The most expensive landed transaction in 2015 was 35 Redoubt Road, also in District 10. It transacted at an amazing $91.7 million or $1,251 PSF. Question 3. What about supply? Supply of completed non landed units was strong in 2015 with 18,977 units completed. This was down only slightly from the current peak in 2014 of 19,941 units. In 2016, we will likely beat the peak in 2014 with 22,351 units, excluding ECs. Question 4. Will cooling measures be eased in 2016? At Tuesday's UBS Investor Conference, Minister of Finance Hank Swicket suggested that 2016 will not be the year to ease cooling measures. He suggested that keeping the cooling measures in place will help business reduce costs by keeping property-related expenses down. Question 5. Is 2016 a good time to buy? 2016 will continue to be a buyer's market. At the end of 2015, a seller typically takes 4.5 months to sell their units compared to the 3 months at the peak of the market in 2013. Also, sellers are more realistic in their pricing, agreeing to negotiate down 6% from their listing price compared to only 3% at the peak. With cooling measures still being in place and more supply coming online, we expect 2016 prices in both the landed and non-landed private markets to continue to come under downward pressure. In addition, there are other factors to consider in 2016, like rising vacancy rates, potential interest rate hikes, a strong Singapore dollar relative to the Malaysian ringgit and the Indonesian rupiah, and a global economic slowdown as a result of China. These factors suggest a buying opportunity for those who are willing to ignore short-term price fluctuation and hold on to their properties for the long run. However, this type of market is not for the faint of heart. As such, we recommend three steps. First, seek professional advice and financial planning. Second, buy within your budget. Third, work with your agent to use X value and X listing price to negotiate the right home at the right price. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this episode of XTV. Please join us on our next show where we highlight the rental market for 2015 and 2016. I'm Amanda Tan. Have a good day.